All right, so this is uh, take two because I just did this whole section and it flipped the screen from whatever reason. So everything was backwards. So it looked like all backwards on your on your side. But anyway, here we go. Um, so this is chapter six notes part two. We're going to continue with the skeletal muscle anatomy. Um, we're now moving to microscopic anatomy, so the subcellular level. So we're going to get on our magic school bus, and we're going to dive into a muscle organ, and we're going to sit on top of the endo endomysium or endomysium, that skeletal muscle or that connective tissue sheath sitting on an individual skeletal muscle cell or fiber. So that's where we're going to start today. And just as a reminder, skeletal muscle cells are elongated, so that's why we call them fibers. Um, they are bundled together with a combination of skeletal muscle tissue and connective tissue to give them strength. Um, skeletal muscle cells are multinucleated, they're voluntary, so we can choose to move them, um, and they're the most abundant muscle tissue type in the body, so I just want to make sure I, I correct that, that they're, they're the most abundant muscle tissue type. So again, I told you, we're going to get on our magic school bus and we're going to, let's see. So let's start from the outside. So I'm going to point to my biceps brachii muscle right here. So I'm going to sit on the epimysium, the connective tissue sheath around the outside of an individual muscle cell. Peel that back. We're going to cut that muscle in half and we're going to see a bunch of individual little circles. Those individual little circles are called fascicles. Fascicles are also covered by a connective tissue sheath called a paramecium, paramecium. Okay. We look at a fascicle. A fascicle has a bunch of little circles in it. Those individual circles are the individual muscle cells. Those individual muscle cells are also wrapped with a connective tissue sheath, which is called an endomycium. Okay, so that's where we are. We are sitting on top of the endomycium on an individual skeletal muscle cell. Can you picture it? Good. So we're sitting there. We're going to peel back that connective tissue endomycium. And we're going to be sitting on the plasma membrane of the individual skeletal muscle cell, which is called the sarcolemma. We cut that skeletal muscle cell in half, and you're going to see more tubes, more circles. Those tubes are the, are the cytoskeleton. I told you in the last video that the skeletal muscle cells are so full of cytoskeleton, they push everything else to the outside. Those individual tubes are mild fibrils, which are part of the cytoskeleton, and they are made up of smaller proteins that are called myofilaments. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So our myofibrils are the cytoskeleton, and the cytoskeleton, or myofibrils, are made up of smaller protein filaments that are called myofilaments, and we have two main types. We have actin and myosin. Actin is the thin filament, so I think of actin, act thin, and myosin or mighty myosin is the thick filament. And the mighty myosin is actually going to reach out, grab onto actin, and cause it to move. And that's what's going to cause contraction or shortening or movement to happen in your muscles, okay? And specifically, we're talking about skeletal muscles here. It's the arrangement of actin and myosin that also provides the striated or striped appearance. Okay, so if we're looking at an individual skeletal muscle cell here, so again, we've got the epimesium, we cut this in half, we've got these individual fascicles here. Um, those individual fascicles are, if we're talking about one that's a fasciculus, um, they have the paramecium, which is around them, and then we have, we, we look at the individual fascicle, and we've got these individual little tubes here. That's one skeletal muscle cell. Um, we pull out one skeletal muscle cell, and that's covered by a connective tissue sheath called an endomycium. Okay, so that's where we were getting to on our magic school bus. We peel back that endomycium, and now we're at the plasma membrane of one skeletal muscle cell, and that's called the sarcolemma. Cut that skeletal muscle cell in half, and <gasps> we see more tubes. These tubes are the myofibrils cytoskeleton. There is so much cytoskeleton in this cell that it pushes all the organelles. So you see this little bump right here and that little bump right there. It pushes all the other organelles to the outside because it's so full of cytoskeleton. Why? Its job is movement. So it's going to be filled with the organelle that's responsible for movement. 
if we pull out one myofibril, we see that it has smaller sections right here. And these smaller sections right here are the myofilaments. So if you want to add in something in your green books here, that would be the actin and myosin or the myofilaments right there. So as I said, myosin is the thick filament and actin is the thin filament. And the arrangement of these two micro or myofilaments, those are synonyms for each other, is going to provide um, for movement. It's going to, and it's also going to give you that striated or striped appearance. And we call the organization of these myofilaments a sarcomere. And a sarcomere is the contracting unit of an individual skeletal muscle cell. All right. So here we have person, here we have the biceps brachii, we're looking at the bicep muscle here, we're pulling out one fascicle, so this bundle right here with this yellow doodad, this yellow doodad would be the, be the paramecium, we're pulling out one individual skeletal muscle cell that kind of looks like a Slim Jim, but that's okay. So this is one individual skeletal muscle cell. We are pulling back this pink okay which is going to be the sarcolemma i guess okay because i didn't see two layers but we know that there is also an endomecium there these individual things are going to be the myofibrils the myofibril is then made up of smaller proteins which are called myofilaments and the arrangement of these make up the sarcomeres and there's going to be thousands and thousands of sarcomeres um lined up together they all are connected, and when they shorten, they are going to shorten the entire skeletal muscle cell. And basically, the number of skeletal muscle cells that shorten within one muscle determine the strength or the intensity that, and the amount of force you're going to be able to um, achieve or contraction with those skeletal muscle cells. Two other things I want to show you on the slide, all right? So again, this pink thing as we peel back, all right, is the sarcolemma or plasma membrane. You see this blue doodad coming from the sarcolemma. Well, that's called a T-tubule or a transverse tubule. And really, it should be in pink or the sarcolemma should be in blue. Why? Because T-tubules are specializations that come off of the plasma membrane that bring messages, essentially, or from the outside of the cell in, okay? Skeletal muscle cells are super long, and, and, and I want you to think about how quickly they respond, how quickly they react. You know, me doing this happens in a fraction of a second. Why? Because of the T-tubule. The T-tubule brings in chemical and electrical messaging from the outside of the cell, literally through the cell, and spreads it all out so that your skeletal muscle cell can respond so quickly, all right? So in my mind, that T-tubule or the sarcolemma, they should be the same color because a T-tubule is what's called an invagination of the sarcolemma. And then we've got the yellow here, all right? The yellow I call grandma's holy sweater, a.k.a. the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a specialized smooth endoplasmic reticulum of skeletal muscle cells that is, are responsible for holding on to calcium, releasing calcium, absorbing calcium, releasing calcium, absorbing calcium. And we talk about the sliding muscle filament theory, so that's the movement, another New Vision's gang symbol, the movement of the individual sarcomere will understand that calcium is really the final go signal for that to happen. And as you can see, each myofibril is surrounded by um, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, you can see sarcoplasmic reticulum here, sarcoplasmic reticulum here, and then you see a T-tubule. And that's actually a special thing. So you've got a T-tubule and you've got sarcoplasmic reticulum on either side. It basically makes three tubes, and we call that a triad. And that's going to make sense a little later on. Okay. So again, this is an individual skeletal muscle cell or fiber. We cut it in half. We pull out one myofibril. So here we're looking at the myofibril closer up, and we see our two myofilaments. We have actin in blue, excuse me, and myosin in red. And myosin has these little heads on them, um, and it's the myosin heads that actually reach out and grab onto actin and pull it. All 
All right, so the sarcomere. So the sarcomere, which again, like we like we learn the anatomy of an osteon, we're going to learn the anatomy of a sarcomere. And the sarcomere is the contractile unit of an individual skeletal muscle cell, okay? It has some different pieces to it. A sarcomere runs from Z disc to Z disc, all right? That's kind of its borders. And then what's attached to the Z disc are actin filaments. There is one continuous myosin filament. Well, there's more than one, but as we see, there's going to be one continuous, continuous myofilament. And then there's going to be the center of the, of the sarcomere, and that's where the M line is. Where the M line is, there's going to be an area on either side of it where you're not going to see any actin at all, and that's called the H zone or the bare zone. And that is occurring when that sarcomere is not contracting. But what occurs is that, so if my fingers, so if my fingers are actin and there's an area where they're not touching, that would be the H zone. And the middle of that area would be the M line. And what happens during contraction is that myosin grabs onto actin and pulls it towards the M line, pulls it towards the M line and the H zone disappears. I'm like, what are you talking about, Mr. Shirley? Sound like football plays. Okay. So here's an individual skeletal muscle fiber. We peeled back the pink sarcolemma. I can see grandma's holy sweater, AKA sarcoplasmic reticulum. I can see a green transverse tubule. Awesome. These are individual myofibrils. I'm gonna pull out one myofibril and I'm going to look at the arrangement of myofilaments, actin and myosin, that make up a sarcomere. So a sarcomere. I'm going to get a something to draw with. I'm going to get a pen. Okay. So a sarcomere runs from, let's see if it will let me, okay. See my little dots here from Z disc to Z disc. Okay. So that is one sarcomere. And you can see there's a sarcomere here, and there's a sarcomere here, and there's a sarcomere here. So from Z disc to Z disc, okay, is one sarcomere. And this blue right here is representing actin. So actin is anchored onto the Z disc. So we've got actin coming here, and on the other side, actin coming here. There's an area right here where you see no blue. That is called the H zone. And the center of the H zone is called the M line or M band, okay? However, there is one continuous red structure here, which is a, oh, that was horrible, sorry. Um, that is a myosin filament. So where we only see the actin, it's lighter in color, and so this is our I band. But where we see myosin, it's going to be darker, and that is our A band. So this would be I, over here is A, here is I. So essentially, every sarcomere has two I bands and one A band. I made a mess of that slide, sorry. All right, so again, individual skeletal muscle fiber, um, pulling out one myofibril, zooming in on that myofibril. We're going to look at the anatomy of just one sarcomere. And remember, there's thousands and thousands of sarcomeres. And a sarcomere runs from Z disc to Z disc. The Z disc anchors, and Z disc is made out of another protein called Titan, just so you know. Um, so the Z disc has the actin filaments attached to it on both sides. There's an area in the middle where there's no actin, and that's called the H zone. The center of the H zone is, as we can see down here, the M line, okay? We have one continuous myosin, and then you've got the actin bands on either side. Another picture of it, another picture of it. Another picture of it. I definitely want you to know this anatomy. And then this just talks about how there's numerous mitochondria as an energy source, and then our two special organelles, the sarcoplasmic reticulum and transverse tubules. 
and a final picture showing the triad that I showed you about here.